but the question that might come to your mind is so in this particular case why are we not using a coalesc function because that is what coalesc function does it returns the first non null value and if you do coalesc of a null null in sql it will actually output a so why are we using max here and not coalesc Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This channel, Air Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts related to science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, we are going to solve this question on lead code regarding customer purchasing behavior analysis. The difficulty level of this question is medium, and I'm going to share the SQL schema as well as the Panda schema in the description box below. Okay, the question reads: We are given a table called transactions with five different columns: transaction ID, customer ID, product ID, transaction date, and amount. Transaction ID is the unique identifier for this table. Each row of this table contains information about a transaction, including the customer ID, the product ID, date, and amount spent. We are also given a second table called products with three different columns: product ID, category, and price. Product ID is the unique identifier for this table. Each row of this table contains information about a product, including its category and price. We are asked to write a solution to analyze customer purchasing behavior. For each customer, we need to calculate the total amount spent, the number of transactions, the number of unique product categories purchased, the average amount spent, the most frequently purchased product category. If there is a tie, choose the one with the most recent transaction. A loyalty score defined as number of transactions times ten plus total amount spent divided by hundred. Round the total amount, average transaction amount, and loyalty score to two decimal places. We are also needing to return the result table ordered by loyalty score in descending order, and then by customer ID in ascending order. Okay, so quite a lengthy question, but let's go through this example. Here we have two different customer IDs, one zero one and one zero two, with various products, transaction dates, amount, etc. And then we have a products table. So let us see. Let me just drag it to the right so that we can, you know, go through it. So let's see. For customer ID one zero one, there are three product IDs that were bought one, two, and three, which are basically A, B, and C. So what is the number of transactions for customer ID one zero one? Three. Then if we look at the total amount spent, so total amount spent is hundred plus hundred fifty. That is two fifty plus two hundred. That is four fifty. Then we have a number of transactions are three. Number of unique product categories purchased. So since all the transactions are for different product categories A, B, and C, that means there are three different unique product categories. Then it says the average amount spent. We can you know do the total amount spent divided by total number of transactions. Similarly, for most frequently purchased, since everything is purchased once, so we need to make sure that the one with the most recent transaction is output. So the most recent transaction is this one, right? Tenth of February, twenty twenty-three. So product ID three. That means product category C. And finally, if we need to also return the loyalty score, which we can calculate using this formula. And that is what we have in our output, right? So total amount spent, transaction count, unique categories, average, top category, and loyalty score. So to solve this question, since we need the information from both these tables, the first thing we should do is use the product ID column, which is common in both of these tables, to merge these tables. So let's start by doing that. Let's do this from this table called transactions, aliased as T. Perform a left join on the products. Table alias as P. You can also do an inner join on T dot product ID is equal to P dot product ID. Now what we are going to do is let us keep everything from the transactions table and from the products table. We are only concerned about the category because we need to make sure which is the most frequent category. I don't think we need the price part here. Right. So let us just take P dot category. Let me go ahead and run this. Let's see what do we get in our output. Okay. So if we look at our output right now, let me just drag it to the left. So now we have the transaction ID, customer ID, transaction date, amount, and category at one place. 
Now we need for every customer ID and category what is the total count of that purchase because we need to make sure in our final output what is the most bought category, right? So to do that, what we can do is we can use a window function. Let's use count as a window function. So count star and then over since we are writing a window function, we need this for every customer ID and category. So partition by customer ID and category and let us return everything and let's alias this as count, right? So CNT. Okay, let me go ahead and run this again. Let's see what do we get in our output. So now if we look at this, let me just drag it further to the left. So you have for customer ID 101 category A, there were one transaction. Similarly for B, one transaction and so on. Okay. Now, once we have this, what we need is for every customer ID, we can arrange in descending order of count to make sure which one should be assigned a rank one. And the question says that if there is a tie, choose the one with the most recent transaction date. So what we can do is let us save this in a common table expression. So with CTE as this entire thing goes into parentheses and now from this common table expression, let us keep all the columns that we have already and let's use the row number to rank. So row number and then since this is a window function again, so over partition by customer ID and then order by the count in decreasing manner and if there is a tie, transaction date in decreasing manner as well and let us alias this as rank okay now let me go ahead and run this again let's see what do we get in our output so if we look at our output now we have the ranks as well right so now from this what we can do is we can simply go ahead group by the customer id and then start by you know if you sum the amount that is going to give you the total transaction amount if you count the transaction id that is going to give you the number of transaction if you count the distinct category it is going to give you the number of unique categories and so on right so let's start by doing that let's go step by step so let's save this new information in another common table expression called cte2 as and then this entire thing goes into parentheses again and now from this information, let's do something that is going to give us the entire output. From this common table expression to what do we need is for every customer ID, right? So if we look at our output for every customer ID, we need the total amount, transaction count, unique categories, average transaction amount, top category and loyalty score. Let's do one by one. So from this common table expression to let us group by the customer id return me the customer id and then firstly let's start with okay so firstly we need the total amount spent right total amount spent how can we get the total amount spent we can basically sum up this amount category right so let me just drag it okay so let us perform a sum of the amount column and that is going to be our total amount. Then what is the second column that we need? We need the number of transactions. So you can simply do a count of transaction ID and that is going to give you the number of transaction. So if I do count of transaction ID, that is going to give us the What's the alias that we need for this? We need it as transaction count, right? So as transaction count, then what's the third thing that we need? We need the number of unique categories. So if we do a count of distinct category column, that is going to give us the distinct categories or unique categories. Let me just copy paste it here. What's the fourth column that we want? We need the average transaction amount. So if you do the sum of amount divided by the count of transaction ID, that is going to give you the average transaction amount. Let us do that. So sum this sum of the amount column, that is the total amount divided by count of transaction ID. 
right and that is this division is going to give you the average transaction amount right average transaction amount let me just paste it here then what we need is we need the top category and the loyalty score for now let us you know keep the top category part let me compute the loyalty score because it is straightforward and then i will come back to the top category so comma let me go ahead and do the loyalty score the loyalty score definition or the formula is number of transactions that means count right so i can do count of transaction id copy this and then that should be multiplied by 10 and then this entire thing should be right so let me put it in parenthesis entire thing should be plus total amount spent so that is sum of the amount column sum of the amount column divided by 100 and this entire thing should be aliased as the loyalty score loyalty score okay now for the time being let me go ahead and run this let's see if we are going to get all the columns except the one that we skipped so if i look at my output here we have the customer id total amount transaction amount unique categories average transaction amount and the loyalty score okay now the question says that p of this column should also be rounded to two decimal places we are going to come back to the column that we left but let us you know complete everything else so that we can you know directly focus on the on the top category so you need to round the total amount right so round this entire thing to two decimal places similarly you need to round the average transaction amount so which is this one right so round this entire thing to two decimal places and then we also need to round the loyalty score so round this entire thing to two decimal places okay let me go ahead and run this again so that it's working uh, if we look at our output yes everything is fine and we have that okay now the only column that is remaining in our output is the most frequent purchase product category so you remember we had a table where we ranked based on the count and if there was a tie based on transaction date in decreasing manner so what we can do is we can use a case when statement that when your rank equal to one that means that is the most frequent one so return me that category else you return me null so what i'm saying is before the loyalty score right so let me just drag it to the left so that the entire thing is visible right so this is what we have here let me just bring this down so that it's easier for us to you know read the entire code at once okay now after the average transaction amount and before the loyalty score we need the top category so now what i'm doing is since you have grouped by the customer id what i'm saying is case when your rank is equal to one because that is how we ranked then you return me the category column else you return me the null value end the case statement and then this is going to basically give you so for example for 101 you have three different rows right they are going to have rank 1 2 and 3 so for rank 1 let's say it is returning us let's say c and then you are going to have null and null so out of these what do you need in our output the non null value right but because you are using a group by right so that means you need to have a aggregate function to get one single output out of this group that you have created so you write max of this entire thing and then as what is you know required in our output what's the name or the alias of this column top category so let me just copy it here and then paste it so this should be aliased as top category let me bring this down and this is what we have okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output okay so even though this is accepted but there is some discussion to be held because it's not complete yet firstly it should be ordered by loyalty score right so if we look at our output it should be ordered by loyalty score in decreasing manner so order by loyalty score in decreasing manner and then by customer id in ascending order if i go ahead and run this 
it says accepted again okay that's fine but let me explain you in this particular case why are we using a max right so let me just switch to excel so that it's easier for me to explain so for example let's take a hypothetical case where you have customer id you have three different rows and category a b and d with rank 1 2 and 3 now what we are doing is we are doing the max of so case when rank equal to 1 right return me the category else you return me null null so it is going to basically give you max of a null null and obviously this aggregate function is going to return you a okay but the question that might come to your mind is so in this particular case why are we not using a coalesce function because that is what coalesce function does it returns the first non-null value and if you do coalesce of a null null in sql it will actually output a so why are we using max here and not coalesce the function of coalesce function to do something like this right the problem lies in we using a group by why because coalesce is a scalar function not an aggregate function and we are aggregating right we are using a group by so we are so this is a group that we need out of this group return me the first non-null value and that is why you need to have a aggregate function what are the aggregate functions in sql max min sum average count but coalesce is a scalar function it is not a aggregate function so then you might ask okay then when can we use coalesce so if you think about this you have a table like this where you have two different columns and then if you write a code like this from this table b coalesce me category 1 and 2 that means return me the first non-null so out of for this particular row row 25 a and null the first non-null value is a right so that is what you are returned then null and b so first non-null is b and similarly for this third row so you see when can you use a coalesce versus when you need to use a aggregate function so that is why we are going to use a max in this case okay so now i think our you know code is accepted if we look at our output our output is exactly same as expected output let me go ahead and submit to see if it passes all the test cases or not now this is accepted and this is how to do it so very lengthy very tricky question but what we basically did was firstly merge the two information right the transaction and products table so that we can get the category column and then we performed a count that for every customer id and category what is the number of that category purchased once we had that then we use that common table expression to basically rank based for every customer id in decreasing order of count and the most recent transaction date if there was a tie we saved this in common table expression too and then using that we calculated all the metrics for the customer behavior we calculated the total amount transaction count unique categories average transaction amount and then we also learned about why do we need to use max or an aggregate function or and not a coalesce which is a scalar function in this particular case and then we finally also calculated the loyalty score so at this survey do it let me know if there's a better more efficient to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video